Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. The foxiest character in Genshin Impact is finally playable. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the bird chomping Yai Miko, a Constellation Zero with a free to play 4 star weapon, the Dodoko Tails. Yai Miko is undoubtedly a contender for best waifu in Genshin Impact, but how about her combat prowess at Constellation Zero? But before that, it's time to pay some bills and today's sponsor is Mech Arena. Mech Arena is one of the best and most polished free-to-play team-based multiplayer shooters on mobile. Play in epic live 5 vs 5 and 2 vs 2 death matches as you fill the map with robot entrails from blowing up your opponents. Mech Arena has recently ascended from robot collector to husbando and waifu collector with its new pilots feature. There are 12 new and unique pilots to choose from. Nova is by far my favorite pilot based on her design alone. When's the last time you've seen a dual donut wielding waifu? Pilots provide a stupefyingly tremendous amount of additional depth and gameplay variety as they are specialized for certain weapons or mechs. Find your favorite combination of mech plus waifu or husbando to create even more robot entrails. On top of that, Mech Arena is always adding more content, and there will be a brand new pilot and a brand new mech just later this month. There's never a lack of new content in Mech Arena. What really stood out to me is just how responsive and smooth the matches I played in Mech Arena felt. Win or loss, I always found it satisfying to see mechs exploding everywhere over the course of the game. Mech Arena is a completely free-to-play mobile game on Android and iOS, so be sure to smash that link down below or scan the QR code on the screen to get the Steel Reaper skin, 500 acoins, and 70,000 credits to help kickstart your game. And be sure to add me as a friend so we can play some matches together. Huge thanks to Mech Arena for sponsoring today's video. As usual, with any showcase, we need to take a look at my Yai Miko's build. As mentioned earlier, my Yai Miko is using the Dodoko Tails at Refinement 5. For her artifacts, she's using the two-piece Gladiators plus two-piece Shimanawas. She's at Constellation Zero, and her talents are at the diabolical level of 666. My Yai Miko's damage potential is at a very low 60% when compared to a damage maximized Constellation Zero Yai Miko with the Dodoko Tails and talent level 10. This is due to my Yai's talents only being at level 6. Now the Dodoko Tails isn't even her best free to play option, and when compared to the Map of Mare at Refinement 5 with 2 stacks, now my Yai's damage potential is only at 53%. For reference, I think a character is most accurately showcased at around 70 to 80% of their damage potential, so please keep this in mind as you watch this video. Through simply leveling Yai's talents to level 10 after a few weeks of farming the New World boss, Yai will do around 29% more damage, going from talent level 6 to talent level 10. Anyway, let's finally get started with the showcase by electrocuting our favorite volunteer, the Regisvine. We'll start off with her basic attack damage. As we can see, her charge attack actually hits the Cryo Regisvine twice thanks to its thick plant body and the multiple zaps that her charge attack does. I'm personally surprised by the reasonable amount of damage her charge attacks did here. Now it's worth noting that the Dodoko Tails is also great for charge attacks. Next, let's take a look at the bread and butter of Yai's kit, her elemental skill. Her elemental skill allows her to drop three fox turrets, and each turret zaps the cryo regisvine once every three seconds. And I believe each cycle of zaps generates one electric particle for a total of five electric particles for three turrets over the course of the duration of the turrets. The zaps on crit are doing a humble 5730 damage each. And also just a reminder that Yai is eating all the YouTube birds that aren't subscribed, so I recommend erring on the side of caution and clicking that red subscribe button down below if you don't want to be eaten by Yai. And now for one of the most cunning looking cutscenes in the game, Yai's burst. I absolutely love the sinister look Yai has during her burst. Anyway, you can see here that I use her elemental skill three times before using her burst. Yai does an initial lightning strike and then sacrifices all her totems in order to do follow up Tenko Thunderbolts, one for each totem sacrificed. In total, all four hits of her burst did a nice 69,606 damage to our shockingly friendly giant plant friend. 
And let's finish her salad like we always do by utilizing Yai's full kit. By first dropping 3 totems, then using her burst, this refreshes her totems cooldowns and allows her to drop 3 more totems. After which, Yai has time to spam some of her basic attacks until our poor plant friend is no longer with us. R.I.P. Now that we have an idea of what a 53% free to play damage potential Yai can do in terms of her solo damage, let's take her and her fox friends for a walk with a full team against the long slumbering Earthshaker Dragon. Yai's burst did 33,046 damage per Tenko Thunderbolt, and her Sakura Sesho totems are doing between 9,000 and 13,000 damage on crit per zap. With both the Hakushin Ring and Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers buffing Yai's damage, this team was effortlessly able to punch the stuffing out of our favorite punching bag. But where's the fun without a nuke showcase? For this nuke showcase, I'm using a Refinement 1 Kagura's Verity, as well as the Emblem of Severed Fates, to maximize her burst damage at Constellation Zero. <laughs> Then, with food and my whale supports, Yai's burst was doing 171,402 damage per Thunderbolt, which in total leads to an impressive 647,706 total damage with just a level 6 burst. I'm personally quite excited to see what she can do with a level 10 burst. Now let's take Yai Miko into the most challenging and terrifying content in the game, Abyss 12. I'll be using the previous Taser team for this run. Kokomi is using the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers and Tenacity of the Millilith. Sucrose is using a Refinement 4 Hakushin Ring and the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer. And Fischl is using a Refinement 1 Prototype Crescent and some artifacts to boost her damage. The idea of this team is to try and have high uptime on all the buffs on Yai. With this rotation, I'm able to have all the buffs from the team which include the Hakushin Ring, Sucrose's EM Sharing, Sucrose's Constellation 6, the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, the Tenacity of the Millilith, all on Yai during and shortly after her burst. And by alternating in Sucrose to maintain the Viridescent Veneer's Resistance Shred and Hakushin Ring buff, this team is able to have decent uptime on all its buffs. Another interesting thing about this team is that it never felt like I was actually short on energy. While I didn't often have all my bursts ready immediately off cooldown, this team can do the majority of its damage without the bursts involved. Here I decided to conserve their bursts for the panic phase of the Perpetual Lego Array. One unfortunate thing about Yai's totems is that they don't seem to reliably target the vulnerable robot. As such, I relied on their bursts damage to finish off the Scoot robot, and then took out the exposed and vulnerable core within the recommended 3-star-able time 90 seconds. Twelve two one is another chamber with a very beefy single target boss fight, but this time it's the Primo Geo Vishap. I open up with the same rotation as against the Perpetual Mechanical Ray to provide Yai with as many buffs as possible. All things considered, I'm surprised by the lack of energy issues and by its decent performance, despite not having some of the best supports in the game like Bennett and Kazuha. I really appreciate Kokomi in this situation as she's able to heal off my mistakes and provide reliable buffs as well as to provide Electro Charge for Sucrose to double swirl. All these things help quite a bit in a fight like this and manage to complete this in a very reasonable 64 seconds. 1231 is the first showcase in this video with multiple targets for this team to deal with. Thanks to Electro Charge, there are tons of numbers on the screen as Electro Charge ticks and double swirls are happening to both the robots. The reasonable AoE on Yai's burst also helped significantly chunk the robots. One thing I like about this team is that it has two viable drivers in it. Kokomi is a great driver during her burst to apply more Hydro for better uptime on Electro Charge, as well as Fischl's passive too, while Sucrose provides a lot of extra damage through her double swirls. Frankly, I'm not sure who I should be using more as the driver on this team, but in the end it hardly mattered as this Taser Yai team was able to finish 12-3-1 in a very respectable 58 seconds. <laughs> Yugen 
And as usual at the end of these videos, I'm going to provide my initial impressions of Yai. Due to the lack of boss materials and her talents only being at level 6, she has a ton of room for growth just from her talents alone. I'll be making a peak potential free to play Yai video after a few weeks of farming the new boss domain for her talent materials. With that being said, even at just 53% damage potential, I think this Yai did quite well. She certainly doesn't feel overpowered as of right now, but given the fact that she's missing a substantial portion of her damage because of her talent levels, and that she has no dedicated artifact set, and the fact that she's a brand new character, it's hard for me to say how good she is. The Genshin community is going to need some time to find better team compositions and situations for our favorite bird chomping fox of Genshin Impact. Let me know what you think about Yai Miko so far and also how you plan to use her. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. Yeah.